Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is oral enteral communication and why it is very important to know it. But before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. Starting with what is oral enteral communication? Now, as the name suggests, oral refers to the oral, which is the mouth, enteral, which is the antrum of the nose, so it is the communication between the oral cavity and the nasal cavity. Now, it is an unnatural space that forms between. Why unnatural? Because there is no space that is like the connect the nose with the mouth. It, so that's why it's called unnatural space. If it forms, this is referred to as the unnatural space that does not exist in real life. Okay, situation. But it only exists in certain situations, which I will speak about what are the causes behind the oral enteral communication. Anyways, so it is an unnatural space that forms between the maxillary sinus and the oral cavity following the extraction of the upper teeth. Why the upper? Why not lower teeth? Because we have maxillary sinus. Maxillary sinus is only up, not down. Okay, so that's why if you extract which the upper teeth, is it the anterior or the posterior? Of course, the posterior, the uh, maxillary posterior teeth, because they are in close proximity to the maxillary sinus, which teeth commonly? You know that the palatal root of the maxillary uh, first molar together with the maxillary second molar, these are the closest to the maxillary sinus. Remember, the palatal root of the maxillary first molar together with the maxillary second molar, these are the closest to the maxillary sinus. So always when the patient wants to extract his the upper posterior teeth, whether the upper six or the upper seven, we need to ask from him to take an OPG or orthopentomogram in order to see uh, how close the teeth to the maxillary sinus. As you can see in the picture, there is a direct communication that took place after the extraction of the upper first molar. Now the nose or the, no, no, the nose together with the mouth are connected with one another. Okay, how via the maxillary sinus. So which means that the patient will end up having maxillary sinusitis which is inflammation of the maxillary sinus due to the direct communication between the oral cavity with the nasal cavity. Now you can see in the picture that the upper right second molar, which is one six, has been extracted. And because it is in a close proximity with the maxillary sinus, so this is a site of oral enteral communication that happens following the extraction. Another thing that you can see in the OPG, that tooth number 26, which is the upper left sec, uh, first molar, it is also in close proximity to the maxillary sinus. So if you extract it, also you will end up having a site of oroenteral communication. Now, another picture, as you can see, that tooth number 26, which is the upper left first molar is also in close proximity to the maxillary sinus. So if the patient extracted his upper left first molar, this will be a site for oral enteral communication. So we need to inform the patient that oral enteral communication will happen following the extraction. So that's why we will extract the tooth and then we will do buccal advancement flap depending on the how much of the communication happened, which I will explain in my video at the end. So as I said, the cause behind the oroenteral communication is extraction of upper posterior teeth that are in close proximity to the maxillary sinus, which teeth commonly, most common teeth are the palatal root of the maxillary first molar together with maxillary second molar. These are the closest to the maxillary sinus. So if you extract any of these, it might lead to oral enteral communication. And of course, this scenario differs from patient to patient. We have some patients that the upper first molar, which is the pedital root, is not in close proximity to the maxillary sinus. So this is the importance of, of taking an OPG orthopentomogram 
before starting the extraction so that you can see if the roots of the teeth are in close proximity to the maxillary sinus or no. If they are close, then there will there is a chance of oral enteral communication and that the patient should be informed before starting the extraction. Now, what are the symptoms the patient might experience with the oral enteral communication? Number one is epistaxis, which is nose bleeding, because like there is a direct connection between the nose and the mouth that happened, and that led to nose bleeding. Fluid or air passage into the nose, because now whenever you, you know that whenever you open your mouth, now the nose and the mouth are connected with one another. So when the patient, whenever the patient breathes, okay, there is a hole inside his mouth. This hole, it leads to the nose immediately. So that's why he will feel something heavy inside his nose due to the hole that is present in his mouth that had led to the direct connection between the mouth and nose, together with the pain, of course, a feeling of heaviness inside nose and voice alteration. His voice will change. So you can see in this picture, there is a hole inside his mouth. This hole, it will directly lead to the nose. Now, what about if left untreated? If left untreated, it will result in infection or oroantral fistula. So the patient will have maxillary sinusitis. So you feel something heavy inside his nose. So whenever he drink something, the fluid will go into his nose. So he will feel something heavy in his nose because like there is a hole that is inside his mouth that is going, that's linked with his nose. That's why. Now, what are treatment options that we can offer for the patient? Now, if the communication is less than two millimeters, then no treatment is required because it will not produce any symptoms. But if the communication is two to six millimeter, then it is big, then we need to do buccal advancement flap. How to do the buccal advancement flap? I will show you a video later. Now, if the communication is more than six millimeter, then we will do Caldwell look procedure. Caldwell look procedure, okay, that involves a communication that is more than six millimeters. So it is the, if we have a very big communication that happened. So in order to close this big communication, we will do, uh, we will open a window and this is referred to as Caldwell look procedure. So these are the steps of the buccal advancement flap in which we will raise a flap and we will do irrigation and then we will suture the area. We will close the hole that had opened, okay? We will close it and that's it. And we will allow for, for healing to take place. And of course, throughout the healing procedure, we ask the patient to avoid nose blowing so that the suture won't open and avoid any hot things okay until the area is completely closed so that
structure has the same concept as the buccal advancement flap, but this one is indicated if we have a big communication that is more than six millimeter, then we will open a window, okay, which is more than uh, two teeth, which is three teeth will be involved. So three teeth, will we will raise a flap for three teeth, okay? And then we will do irrigation, copious amount of irrigation, and then we will suture the area in order to close. So these are the instructions that should be given to the patient following the procedure, uh, following the uh, buccal advancement flap or Caldwell look procedure. Number one is do not blow the nose for 48 hours because we don't want the suture to open. Number two, when you sneeze, allow the air pressure to escape out of your mouth. Yes, don't hold the sneeze. You need to sneeze with your mouth open and do not hold it, okay? so that we don't want any pressure inside the hole. And if there is too much pressure, then the uh, suture will open. Another thing, we want to keep the area clean. So use an antibacterial mouthwash. Use an antibacterial mouthwash, but not for the first 24 hours while the clot establishes, because we want the clot to form. If you use antibacterial mouthwash, the clot will not form, because we don't want you to gargle in the first 24 hours. After the first 24 hours, you can use an antibacterial mouthwash so that to keep the area clean and no bacteria inside. Lastly, use a decongestant or the one prescribed by your doctor or dentist. Why we need to use a decongestant? Because as I said previously, that the patient will be experiencing something heavy inside his nose while the area is still being healed healing. Okay, so we need to use a decongestant in order to relieve from the uh, pressure inside the nose at the end. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions, don't forget to write it down in the comment section below, and I will be more than delighted to answer your questions. Goodbye.